Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining us on this channel today. Today I will be looking at FL Studio version 20. And what I wanna show you guys how to do is set up an external effect, or at least one way to do it, especially if you have a sound card that supports it. In this particular example, I'll be using a Focusrite Scarlet 6. You can use any sound card that you have that allows you to have an extra stereo output and stereo input. And of course, I'll be using that paired up with the SP404, but you can use all kinds of things, guitar pedals, NPCs, whatever box you want to use that produces an effect or compressor, reverb. You know, there's a lot of Alesis nanoverbs and stuff you can buy really cheap if you just want a hardware touch. Um, the biggest obstacle that I've come across, especially using FL Studio to do that, is to get my digital DSP, which is called the Scarlet Mix Control for Focusrite users, to recognize that my additional outputs three and four are their own thing. In most presets for a lot of these kind of mix controls, your main outs or your monitors and your additional outs are the same signal from your DAW or computer. So it's like you're having two outputs of the same thing. And that's really dope if you have more than one set of monitors. However, in this example with FL and other DAWs, you want line three and four to be independent and assigned by you. So different DAWs do this differently, but in this particular program, routing preset, you wanna choose mixing. And what that allow us to do in the FL mixer is use outputs three and four for whatever we want, irregardless of what's going on in the system. So to set up this loop, I'm gonna show you a cool use for it, especially if you're SP404 owner. So I'm gonna right click, create a Serato instance. We'll load a random sample real quick. So I got Serato loaded with a sample, sounds like this. <laughs> And what I want to do with that is process it in real time with the SP404. So to get that set up, NFL want to send Serato sample to its own track, which will be 10, and I'll name it Serato Out or similar. So that sample is going out. It's going to my main track, which is how you guys hear it. I'm going to turn that off. And on that track itself at the bottom, which is our outputs, we're going to send it to line 3 and 4. This is going to SP404, and we shouldn't hear it but we see the signal, so we're good. Now we want to take that signal hitting the SP404 and bring it back into the computer or into our session. So I named this one SP404N, and at the top, which is our inputs in the mixer, we have line three and four. Keep in mind, line three and four out and line three and four in are not the same thing. On my sound card, line three and four is on the back of the focus right input, and then next to the monitor out, line three and four output two separate things. We're not looping the same exact lines, but you're gonna get a crazy feedback loop. So now that that's set up, I should be able to get it back from the SP404, but right now we're not gonna hear nothing. And in order to get that back into FL Studio through the SP404, you gotta make sure you have external source on. And now we hear that with the MFX effect reverb. So what I like to do is take stereo off, make it a mono sample, turn lo-fi on, and then mess with the DJ looper. record something real quick put the metronome on I'm recording Serato with the Akai mini in real time I'm actually going to extend this a bit set it to line Now, it's creating these instances when I record MIDI, because it's actually recording in the pattern mode for us. Which is lit, because you can just drag and drop that and affect it, you know, enable it, and it will be in perfect timing. And what's causing that to happen is this dot right here. So if you want to work that way, like if you want to program the MIDI, you hit record, and you want what's looping, whether it's a compressor, or reverb, or whatever, to be a pattern clip, on its own automatically without you having to do anything. Make sure this red dot is turned on and every time you record and play, it'll make another instance of it. 
So you kind of have to like set it up first before you hit record. So in my case, I would uh, play it, fix the effects up, and then hit record again and it'll make another one. Let's try it actually. So I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna add a filter to it. So that's lo-fi mode mono with a filter on it. I'll hit record and just hit play. Let it play through one time. And you see when it was done, it created one and then it started to create a new one. This is the one we want. And it's a perfect loop when it's in this particular mode. Additionally, you can just add Edison to the input and record into Edison like you would anything else. Do record on play. So when you hit play, it'll record perfect slices for you. So this is really cool, very efficient. Um, you could resample as well. Like if I mute the Serato, play this one, I wanna send it back into the SP, same track, number 10, which is here. So out into the SP, this time we'll use a reverb and we'll hear what that sounds like. And that's this one. And it keeps making an extra one every time it loops around. I'm not sure how you would stop that unless you're in song mode. pitch it down like they would on the SP-1200 back in the day. So as you can see, it's really easy to come up with a lot of dope vibes with this particular loop in uh, system that I have set up. And other systems and DAWs make it much easier. Ableton Live, you have the external audio effect rack. Um, Studio One has the Pipeline XT. There's other plugins that help you set that up just by choosing the output and input. And also some of them do a delay compensation algorithms to help you record it perfectly in time because there's always gonna be a delay when you mess with this. You could probably see it here. It's like a little touch where it's offset. For me so far and trying it out this way, it hasn't really bothered me, especially when you're side chaining and these are samples or if you're processing everything this way, they're all gonna be offset the same exact for the most part so you really don't notice it. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the box below. Be sure to hit us up on social media. I'm at MG the Future, Twitter and Instagram. Also be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace.